Good morning, everyone. This is Jay Johnson with DailyTexture.com, and I'm having my coffee, and I'm getting ready to work on a piece of art, and I thought I would do a video while I'm working on it and talk a little bit about this particular image right here, where I got it, and why I have chosen this one to use with the new Impressionist Landscape Textures. Um, this is a African crowned crane. I'm sure I've got the name wrong. Um, this is a bird at our local safari park and has a nice little crown on top of its head and it's really cool looking and I've got a few images of these birds but I've never really done anything with them. There is this lovely fence in the background behind them and it always appears in every picture it seems like and I just haven't wanted to fool with it and also when I go to the safari park even though this is a local place I try to go on a cloudy day sometimes when I get there after being there a little bit the sun will pop out and start putting that harsh sunlight on the birds and the animals same way when I go to the zoo um, seems to always happen and so I have a lot of what I call hot pictures where they're in this hot sunlight. The neat thing about the Impressionist landscape textures is because of the strong lighting that I have placed in these textures, they work really well with your hot subjects because that have the hot sunlight on them already because they have strong lighting. When you pair them with a texture that has strong lighting, this should work. So I'm going to... I've chosen this photo because it's got less of the fence in the important areas like in through here and I'm going to reposition this, resize this up and decide how big I want to go and what I'll do is I'll resize it up and move it around and since I put my work on products I like to place my subject in the center a lot of times that's not always ideal um, but in my case it works well. Now see I'll lower the opacity to look at the background versus the picture to see if it might look right and I think it will because we've got strong light here, strong light here and in the texture we've got strong light here, strong light here. So I think that will blend up very nicely. We're going to try it. I'm working in Topaz Photo FX Lab like usual. I'm going to go to my masking tab and I'm going to try to quickly get rid of a lot of this background with the fence and get in close to the bird without going over the bird at this point just to see how this might work. I think this might work relatively well. Getting in as close as I can without going over at this point, lowering the size as I go. Got a little fence in here. I'm not going to try to get every piece of it because I'm actually going to blend some of this texture over the crown. At least that's my intent. I don't know if I've had enough coffee yet to be able to do this. Now part of the problem here is we have a green background behind the, the crown, but yet the background from the texture is lighter up there. But I'll show you how I change color tones in this program to tone down that green.
right now I'm just trying to get as close as I can. Once I get the green tone down, this won't be as obvious. Okay, that's looking pretty good. It's a little choppy looking, but let me go ahead and work on toning this green down and see what I can come up with. I'm going to go to Topaz Clarity on the bird layer. I, you can also do this in Topaz Adjust. You're looking for this right here um, to adjust your hue, saturation. I want to bump him up in detail and saturation a little bit. Then I want to go to this hue, saturation, luminance filter. I'm going to click on saturation and I'm going to go to the green and I'm going to pull it down. Now, in green is not always green. There's a lot of yellow in green. I'm going to pull down the yellow as well to get more of a grayish background. See the difference there? By pulling those two sliders. So I'm going to click OK and accept that. I'm going to see how that looks with my crown up here. Yeah, it may be a little too gray, but. Let me undo that. Look at it and redo it. I'm going to go back and do it again. I'm going to. It was a little too gray. I don't want it quite that gray. So I've undid what I did and I'm going to go back to it again. And I'm going to go back to the saturation pull down the green and pull down the yellow but not quite as much as I did before. That's a little better. It's not quite as gray. Oh, this coffee's good. I love working in the morning on art when I'm up all by myself here, have my coffee. It's just a great way to start the day. That's a little better. It's not quite as gray. Now I'm actually going to have to blend over these feathers to really tie this in. So I'm going to lower my flow, which is my opacity, and go with a big brush and just start, or a bigger brush, and just start kind of going around the edges very softly. I want to leave a hint that the feathers are there. But just soften those edges so it doesn't look so choppy. And so he becomes one with the background. Because it does look a little choppy around those edges. And I'm, I'll bring back some of the crown after I do this. What I don't want to do is bring back some of the fence. Now we'll go the other way to bring back some of it. Let's see, I'm bringing back some of the fence right there. I'm going to have to work on that area. So we'll go back the other way and work on getting rid of this fence. Which is right there. On the top. Okay, now I'm going to go down around the edges and actually blend some of the texture right into the subject by blending away the edges of the subject very softly so there'll just be a hint of these feathers. This doesn't need to be an accurate cutout. Then it looks like it's cut out and pasted. I don't like that look. 
when you leave a hint, the eye of the viewer will fill in the fact that there are feathers sticking out on these edges and they're blending with the background so it's not like a cut and pasted look but yet their eye will fill this in they'll see these feathers go around this beak now I'm going to go with a bigger brush and just kind of tap to bring some of this texture right over the bird now I've got a little too reddish right there, so I'll go back the other way and go over these areas the other direction to tone that down. My goal was to get rid of that fence. And to keep the lighting where it's supposed to be. I'm going to bring back some of this beak right here because I went over it too much. I'm still using a very low opacity, so this is like painting it back very gently and very slowly. And that's just the way I like to work. It's very meditative to me to sit here and do this. This part right here is important. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I like to duplicate the texture layer and put it on top and just see in a different layer mode what I might come up with. I like soft light usually, but not at full opacity, just a little bit to make things a little richer about 36 percent now see my red color has come back here on the bird and I don't want that so on that layer I'll mask that off So that's before and that's after. It just gives it a nice little boost in depth and color and contrast. I'm liking around 40% on that. I may do a little more masking on this crown. Like I said, you just need a, a hint there that it's there. The viewer will see these little bitty pieces and they'll, they'll assume that it's there. It doesn't need to be super, super accurate cutout. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I want to run Topaz Impression on this guy. I have an oil glaze filter a preset that I've set up gosh, a couple of years ago, and I use it all the time. It really boosts the colors like I like and smooths everything out just a little bit. So if I have any excess noise in there, it takes care of that. I'm trying to find my slider over here. There it is. Oil glaze light. See, it really boosts that yellow up and the blue tones and so I'm going to click OK oh yeah I like that I like that really well I'm going to open up another texture let me find it let's see I'm just gonna pick one here pick number nine and I'm gonna flip the light around this way and I'm gonna set it on a different layer mode
and then go with a, a lower opacity on that. The hard light is kind of interesting. Overlay. See how it's shifting the light? But it's a little bit too saturated. I do like how it's really putting some good light up here. Because he's got this splash of sunlight here, so there needs to be some sun coming from there. Don't like the what it's done down here. So what I can do, first of all, is I can desaturate it a little bit. Because I'm really after the lighting, more so than the color on this one. I'm after that light, strong lighting coming in this way. So turn it off, on, and adjust it. I like how it's darkening right here. That's about 50%. Now I'm going to go back to the bird layer. And do it because this enhanced this when I put that texture on top. So I'm, once again, I'm going to do a little more masking on this crown area and bring in that texture underneath right on top of it along those edges and maybe even go back the other way and bring a little bit of that back. Got to watch that fence that's in there. Just trying to, it's really hard when you have a piece like this, these crowns like this on these birds to uh, get the detail to show without going in between every little piece. Because you just need a hint. There we go. So that's before, that's after. We've got this strong light coming here now, which makes sense. I have a corner up here that I did not mask, and I saw that when I turned the layer on and off. I'm just turning layers on and off now to see what kind of effect I get. Okay, I like this. So at this point, I'm going to merge everything. And I, I like this. This is a good blend of the photo with the texture. Gives him a... It, I mean, he just looks like he's been transported to a completely different place. And I'll duplicate this photo layer and reset the mask so you can see the difference. That's before with the fence. And now it's now it just looks like he's been transported out of that fence and somewhere really neat. So I really like that. I may play with this and go do some topaz impression work again. To actually give a even more painterly look to this. So I'm going to go to Topaz Impression 2. And play with a couple that I have set up there. A couple presets I like. Just to see. I may not like it. I like it pretty well as it is. All right, let's see what I can come up with here. I 
I like that one, and there's another one in here that I really like. This one, but without uh, the paper texture showing through for after. Those colors are really rich. Raise up the brush size. I really like the way that looks. I'm going to click OK. Now I have duplicated this layer so I can mask away and bring back some of the detail. See my original one is here underneath. So I can mask out this impression layer. Um, like around the eye. Where I want to bring back some of the detail from the original. And the nose. And even in through here a little bit. I really like that loose brush stroke look. I think I need a little bit more masking here on the beak. To reveal some of the original there. Beaks and eyes need to be the sharpest. And it really helps. Topaz impression really helps when you do a painterly effect like this. To tie this in with the textured background. So, it, you know, in case any of it did look a little choppy. Now it looks like it's become... Uh, one with the background a little bit better. I'm just checking my colors now and my feather details. There may be a little detail I want to bring back down here, especially in the dark areas between the feathers, just to help them have that little bit of contrast showing that and sometimes impression loses some of that contrast. But let's see. And maybe even bring back just a little right here. There. I really like the way this looks. I'm going to merge that. Now I can save both versions. So if I decide, oh, I don't want the painterly look, I can have the other one. And if you remember, I had in the intro video for this collection, I talked about how well these play with other textures. So I'm going to. I'm going to just try to add a little bit more interest. So I'm going to go to the texture sets, the mesmerized collection, which is one of my favorites. And I'm going to pull open this one with this strong light. I'll probably desaturate it though. I had somebody ask me the other day, if I desaturate, I'll lose the color. And that's correct. You will lose the color, but there's sometimes you can overdo it on color when you start stacking a lot of these together and it becomes way too saturated. So by desaturating, you can have the pattern and the lighting without the extreme color in some cases. So I'm raising this one up. I'm going to change the layer mode and just see if this will work at all. I like soft light, I'm going to lower the opacity. That may be a little too much. This particular one. Let's try multiply.
Let's duplicate it and try switching to soft light. That takes away my lighting. Not sure if I want to do this. Sometimes if I'm not sure, I'll switch them around. I mean, uh, rotate, flip, and play with layer modes. Let's go at full opacity. And let's flip it this way. Oh, now that's added some interest right there. It's got a little interest up here and a little interest up here. Still got my strong light where I want it. But let's desaturate it. And this is what I'm talking about. See how saturated it's become? When I desaturate it, it helps keep the color tones of the original that I've already done. It just adds a little interest from that texture in there right through here. Now I don't probably don't need this at full opacity. I just like that extra little bit of interest. And a lot of times if I'm not sure about the opacity I'll go around 50%. Maybe a little higher. Or I'll put it at full opacity and then mask it off where I don't want I'm just going to go around 50 on this one. Just adds a little interest right through here. Breaks up those computer generated brush strokes a little bit. Also pumped up the lighting a little more here. This corner down here may be a little dark. So, let me turn on this one. Flip this thing around. See if there's anything I can do by flipping this right in that corner which is not working. Let me get rid of that layer. Okay I'm going to merge this. I'm still going to work on this corner. So I got a couple couple different ways I can work on the corner. I could go to Topaz Lens Effects, which has a reflector light that I absolutely love, and I could put the reflector, the gold one, on the left, and see if that'll brighten up that corner, or the silver one on the left, which will brighten up that side just a little bit. That's one way to brighten up the corner, or I could go to a brush tool and go to dodge and try just bringing up the brightness of that corner by using a dodge tool right there. And now it's not quite as dark and it shows a little bit of the texture that's right there, which is kind of interesting. So that's before and that's after. I kind of like that. So let me merge that. And then I can decide which version I like. All right, I believe this layer is the photo layer. Yes. And then I believe this layer was the painted layer. Yes. So we have three versions here. We put the photo one on top. There's the photo one. There's the painted one with impression, and there's the painted one with impression with some texture added. So I can save all three of these, and then usually give it a little time, and then come back and look at it again and decide which one I want to publish. I'm really, I, I think I'm really liking the final version. 
but you never know I may even combine these and there's my final version and then take my painted version turn it on put it about 50% and then take my photo version turn it on put it about 50% then I get a combination of everything I just did actually I kinda like that but I'll probably just go ahead and save all three and then give it a few minutes a little bit of a break and then look at it again but anyway I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me mess with this guy and see how I work with these textures and as always thank you for your support I appreciate each and every one of you and love seeing the art you create and I will talk to you next time have a great day